You're listening to the Men's Intuition Podcast with me, Jeff Ash, certified nutritionist, personal trainer, and intuitive eating coach. Here, I'll provide you with practical and engaging conversations to help you and your family transform your relationship with food and body, all without dieting, restriction, guilt, or shame. All right. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Men's Intuition Podcast. Um, I'm excited to bring you a, uh, a special guest today. This one's a little bit different. I was just telling him before we started on, uh, on started recording that he's actually my first non professional guest on the show. And I think that that's really exciting for me. And I think it should be exciting for you as well, because, you know, you often hear, us uh, nutritionists and personal trainers and therapists and that kind of thing talking about these principles from a professional perspective. But I think it can be so incredibly valuable to hear from somebody who is going through this themselves, uh, someone who's just like you, who is uh, dealing with the challenges on a daily basis and working through these these steps and and uh, and principles and not from a theoretical standpoint, but really from you know, actually going through it on a day to day basis and the impact. So I've invited Jake Chapman on today to to talk with us and share his story. And uh, and, and I really think that uh, that a lot of you are going to resonate with him. So without any further ado, welcome, Jake. Hey, Jeff, I'm glad to be on here today. Um, quite nervous because, as you mentioned, I'm, I'm kind of batting the leadoff position for uh, the layman, I suppose, mm-hmm. in the intuitive eating world. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm excited to be here and and uh, hopefully I'll share something today that will inspire someone uh, the way that I've been inspired and and uh, along the way. And so I'm I'm an open book. So let's uh, we can get after it. Sounds great. Well, yeah, I, I actually heard heard Jake speaking a, on another podcast uh, anonymously, and it was a really, really yeah. powerful podcast. It really connected with me. And partway through, I'm like, I got to see if I can can get this guy to come on my podcast and talk with uh, with you all. And I was hoping that he'd be open to not being anonymous. Um, so I reached out to the person who had that podcast and he he asked him about it and and Jake was more than more than happy to meet me and you know virtually in person and and talk and and come on here and share his story with you all. So uh, why don't we just start off with um, you know tell us a little bit about yourself, your your uh, background and kind of what um, what it is about you that uh, people might find interesting. Well, I don't know anything interesting. I suppose I'm just a regular guy. I'm, uh, actually today's my birthday. I made it 39 trips around the sun. Thank you. Um, I kind of did that on purpose to kind of celebrate, uh, another, another year that the Lord has allowed me to, to live, uh, by doing this, by sharing my story, uh, with other people and, uh, going on that other podcast, uh, was very scary, even though it was anonymous, uh, you're kind of putting your business out there yeah. and it's, it's things that uh, for somebody struggling with uh, eating disorder and depression and body image issues, that's very scary to put it all out there. And that's, those are things that you don't share with other people. Mm-hmm. Those are things uh, that you um, keep to yourself in quiet uh, in the still of the night. Those are things that are on your mind. Those are things that, uh, maybe you don't feel comfortable sharing even with a closest friend or with a spouse or partner. Um, and so that was very scary to kind of put everything out there, even anonymously. And, um, but after doing that, it kind of, uh, made me realize, you know, my story is, is worth telling, mm-hmm. uh, because there are people out there that are just like me or maybe not, maybe completely different uh, than I am, but we struggle with some of the same things. And, and there's a sense of community and comfort there and knowing that you're not alone uh, with the things that you're facing. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, you know, I, I grew up, uh, I'm, I'm from Northwest Louisiana, uh, you know, grew up in uh, this uh, Southern culture that's steeped around food and hospitality mm-hmm. and, and uh, that's not always very kind to larger bodies. And uh, just, uh, I was raised uh, in the church uh, as, as most people are in the South. Um, uh, but I noticed, uh, now that I've, I've, I've noticed now that I started developing some eating disorder, uh, habits, uh, when I was in high school out of fear of being any larger than I already was. Uh, and that led to, uh, 
acts of binging and, and planning binges because I was, um, uh, restricting, um, not heavily, but, uh, as we all know, whenever you restrict, that leads for opportunities to, to binge and uh, simultaneously kind of dealing with some, uh, some issues f- from uh, guilt and shame related to uh, being in sin of, of being in a uh, sexually uh, active uh, relationship at 15. Um, oh, uh-huh. I was m- mentally and emotionally not prepared for that. Physically I was, cause that's how the Lord created us to work. Yeah. Uh, but I, I chose to go outside of God's boundaries for that. And it caused a lot of anguish, a lot of shame and guilt. Uh, and in short order, um, those behaviors that I'd already started learning with restricting and binging, I started coping that way, um, by, finding trying to seek comfort through food and isolation um all the while dealing with that that shame and guilt that was going along there and uh those problems exacerbated as I got into college because I was still uh trying desperately to live a life that honored Christ but also struggling with those um sins of the flesh as we in the church world call it yeah. and um and dealing with that that shame and guilt um, that doesn't come from the Lord. And so that, uh, like I said, it just really exacerbated those issues. And I gained a lot of weight um, in short uh, amount of time. And then you start dealing with the issues of people making comments about your body. Uh, So that led to me hating my body and hating everything there was about it, which Mm -hmm reverted back to some of those coping mechanisms uh, and it's a vicious cycle that, you know, you would have uh, shame and guilt and you try to find comfort, uh, you know, by, by eating, which when you overeat, you gain weight, then you hate your body and you try to find comfort through food <laughs> and mm-hmm. it's just a, a vicious yeah. circle. So I, I practiced that way for almost 25 years, you know, like I said, beginning in high school and it wasn't until uh, a couple of years ago that um, I realized that I was uh, dealing with depression. Mm-hmm. And as a man, you don't want to admit that you have any flaws or weaknesses. And uh, I thank the Lord for my wife who lovingly suggested a couple of times, like, Hey, have you ever thought about maybe seeing a counselor? Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, that's, that's for sissies. You know, I don't have any problems. I'm not going to go yeah. sit on a couch and cry about something all day. And I'm an emotional person. I, I yeah. you know, I don't apologize for that, but somehow sitting on a couch and crying about something didn't seem very proactive to me. Yeah. I can definitely relate to that too. I, I, I came, came to mental, to understand mental health from a very different perspective after my first wife passed away. Say, very much like, like you, where I was, had a very skewed sort of, concept of that and especially yeah. from a male perspective yeah yeah so i i started um i, f- I finally uh relented um and it, it's a much longer story uh uh god wove together this very intricate uh puzzle uh puzzle pieces put together of relationships that i formed back in college uh, uh, oddly enough that put me in contact with uh, a counselor i started seeing and uh he really helped me through those dark times and kind of address some of those issues that i was facing that i didn't realize i was facing but i ultimately felt like a lot of the depression and anger that i was feeling really kind of stemmed from my relationship with food and my body size uh, being dissatisfied with all of that. And he uh, was honest with me and said, I, I can't help you with that. And uh, so obviously um, <laughs> I-, I didn't know where to go from there, you know? Yeah. And and he said, well, there's a dietitian that's on staff in this counselor group uh, that deals with intuitive eating and uh, health at every size. And I said, I-, I don't know anything about that. The last thing I want to do is go see a dietitian that says, okay, you're going to need to eat three salads a day and you're going to need to exercise four hours a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Have fun with that. You know? And <laughs> yeah, that was very, right. that was very stressful to think about being put in that situation of the extreme restriction. I didn't know what it was at that time, but it, it scared me. But uh, I've been working with that dietitian uh, just began my third year and, uh, and it's, it's really paying dividends. I've experienced so much freedom uh, by saying goodbye to diet culture. Um, 
I don't have a small body and I'm okay with that. Um, but I'm still in the process, like you said, of, of recovery and I don't have it all figured out. I don't have any pithy thoughts or wisdom, pearls of wisdom to give people uh, cause I'm just figuring it out for myself. Yeah. Well, that's, um, yeah, I think so many people can relate to that. That's, that's such a common, uh, a common theme that we see. And, you know, in my work with clients, um, the, the, the emotional eating, uh, c- using food as a coping mechanism is such a common, common issue. And, and, um, you know, I think all of us can relate to that to some degree, but when it becomes very problematic and, um, and kind of consumes a lot of, yeah. of your life that can, that can really interfere with so many other things. And, you know, you kind of have these parallels with this guilt and shame, um, it, that you talked about from the, yeah from the Christian perspective and yeah. in, in an action that you had done. But then often it's, it's really interesting how food gets moralized in the same way. And, right. and we almost think of eating a cupcake as if it was a sexual, you know, on the same level as a sexual sin. So we, you know, a sexual sin, we feel guilty for yeah. that, or, or we do something, you know, we steal something or, you know, break some kind of a, a law and we feel bad, rightly so for, for doing something that's, objectively wrong but at the same time then we transfer that over to food and then and that guilt and if you're using food as a coping mechanism to soothe yourself from these other things that you feel bad about right. um then that can that can definitely become a problem and well i mean even in the in the christian world we we often are talking with other people cuz if if my listeners aren't familiar i'm also a christian um and so um you know we often find people struggling with working through those things after finding forgiveness to right. still accepting that and showing compassion to themselves. And, yeah. and I see a lot of parallels in intuitive eating and, and the emphasis on compassion and self, uh, you know, self-awareness and really looking at what is at the, the core of the issue. And that's kind of, kind of what you were talking about there is you know, addressing these issues, but not really, you know, you're using something else other than what could truly solve the issue for right. you. Well, you, you said something really interesting, you know, about the cupcake, you know, what do people most say whenever they're about to break their food rules? Oh, I'm going to be bad. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be bad. You're going to really, is it really bad to eat a cupcake? Yeah. To eat your pizza crust? Is that bad? Right. <laughs> Are you really being bad? Yeah. No, you're just, you're breaking these food rules that you secretly desire and you mm-hmm. lust after that food because you're starving. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you haven't had a hamburger bun or French fries in a year. And every time somebody brings out a plate to the table, you think in your heart, man, I really want that. You know, and so you assign that moral value uh, to the food. Oh, I'm going to be bad. You know, I just, yeah. I, that's see, that's something that I've, I've newly discovered within the past couple of years that, that mm-hmm. is, there's no bad food. It's not a yeah. sin to eat a cupcake, you know? No, in and of itself, you know, there, no, no single food is necessarily good for you or bad for you. You know, if you ate right. nothing like the example of if you ate nothing but chicken and broccoli, Huh. Any bodybuilders out there listening, I'm talking to you. If you're eating nothing but chicken and broccoli and white rice, um, and that is not particularly healthy because you're missing out on the nutrition provided by other sources of food. Likewise, if you eat nothing but cupcakes, that's right. probably not really healthy either. So, but eating that variety and that blend of things and, and really looking at food from a neutral perspective instead of moralizing it and, and as you said, you know, saying, I'm going to be bad because you're eating something that tastes good or that someone right. told you is not good for you. Uh, that really impacts your relationship with food. Well, I mean, that, that kind of brings us to a, a good question here. So you, you talked a little bit about your relationship with food in the past. Maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit. And then also what's your relationship with food like now and how has that changed as you've begun to kind of look at things from this different perspective where you're not trying to control your body weight, where you're not trying to um, eat for, uh, you know, looking at specific foods as either good or bad or healthy right. or unhealthy. Yeah. So I mentioned kind of now that I've uh, been working with uh, my counselor, uh, Andy and my dietitian Ashley, that, uh, who have been such a tremendous blessing in my life. Sorry, I'm getting emo- <laughs> uh, emotional thinking about how much they've invested in my life. But um, mm-hmm. through their help, I, I realized that I started restricting uh, when I was in high school. 
um, by s- simply skipping lunch at, at school. Um, because I was a larger guy, I was muscular and, you know, I didn't have any like definition or anything, but, uh, you know, I was a offensive and defensive lineman. So I'm, I'm a big person, you mm-hmm. know, and, and the whole BMI chart does not apply to me, you no. know, cause I was, uh, a very solid, you know, 220, 230 pounds, uh, in high school. And, um, but in my mind, I thought, man, I'm so much bigger than uh, my thinner friends and I don't want to get any larger. So my natural response is, well, well, I just need to eat less. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and through that, uh, I would have these extravagant binges on Saturday mornings after a football game, you know, um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to trigger anyone, but I, you know, I would, you know, um, eat an entire can of biscuits and and eat an entire pound of bacon and say, Oh, well, this is just my post game meal. Mm -hmm. No, I was, starving from all of the the lack of of energy that i did not take in the, the yeah. for that week but i didn't know that that's what i was doing um and dealing with uh and and coping with food I, you know once i started uh working and earning money for myself i would go by essentially um i hate to even use the word junk food after we just talked about not mm-hmm. assigning moral value but then it was well i'm just going to go buy junk food and i would mm-hmm. hide it in my room and yeah. i would um Cause that was mine, you know, it started becoming my secret and my, my thing. Um, and then, uh, through college, you know, living out of a vending machine, just like any normal college student does. Mm-hmm. But, uh, as I started to gain weight, I thought, well, I need to stop doing that. You know what? But, but I would go hit up, uh, fast food restaurants, um, order multiple meals, um, at a fast food restaurant, but change up the drink orders. So they don't think that it's for one person. Like I was oh, wow. beh- behaving that way. Sometimes I would order one from one restaurant and drive across town and order a separate meal from another restaurant. Um, and I would take it all back to my dorm room and sit in the dark and, and eat it and watch TV or play video games. Um, but I, I started coping that way. And as my life uh, progressed, uh, any sort of hardship or stressor that came in my life, I immediately wanted to isolate and mm-hmm. eat. And um, I, I taught school for uh, the better part of seven years. And if you talk to any teachers uh, out there, that's a very stressful job because they take it very seriously. And on top of that, you're dealing with a lot of uh, a lot of issues. That's a, probably an entirely different podcast you could do on on teachers but yeah um i would come home and i would not want to be around my family because i was so stressed out and so tense and that's that's the way that i i worked um then i started um dieting trying to find different things back when the uh, the biggest loser was super popular they had mm-hmm. the body bugs that they put on their arm to measure mm-hmm. your caloric yeah. outta- output and and uh, some friends of mine all got it, and and we did it, and we were bragging about, man, I only ate 1,200 calories today. Man, my deficit was this much today. And, uh, Jeff, I learned I was so angry. I felt, and that's when I really kind of started to think, like, this isn't normal. Like, I don't, um, I don't, just little things would set me off, and I just felt so angry. Well, is because I was hungry. I mean, there's a reason why they call it being hangry, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, so I experimented with that. I experimented uh, with different different sorts of diets uh, around where I'm from. A lot of people drink these uh, shakes and teas and stuff. I mm-hmm. tried that. Uh, uh, I tried the Whole30 uh, diet, um, which that was the only diet that I, I did that I thought, you know what? This is this really is a lifestyle, and that's a buzzword nowadays. Any yeah. sort of diet, oh, and it's not a diet; it's a lifestyle. Really, do you really plan to not eat bread for the rest of your life? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, and yeah. Um, so I I did lose lose weight on on mm-hmm. that, but there came a point where I was like, man, I've got to have a sausage biscuit. And then I would kind of I would cheat on it. So, oh well, you know, I deserve a reward today. Mm-hmm. And, and so, so that's kind of my experience, uh, in relationship with food then. Uh, but as I've been working, uh, with my dietitian and that was really hard and scary to realize, okay, this food is not bad, so I don't have to uh, avoid it. Um, some things that I'm still learning is, is trying to listen to my body 
because I would often eat to the point where I was just so full. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up, you know, with the, Oh, you need to clean your plate, you know, yeah. you, Kind of so that that from an early age that was set up for that mentality of you have to finish everything that you eat and uh, or uh, finish everything that you purchase. I would feel bad about, well, I've ordered this meal at a restaurant or whatever, and I would feel compelled to eat it all, even though I wasn't hungry anymore. And I never once thought, Jake, you can take it home and eat it later. Like, (laughs) or you you can throw it in the trash. I mean, I mean, right. That's the other thing, you know. I mean, that's a little bit of a privileged position to be in. To, yeah. But, but yeah, there's there's uh, times when you know just throwing it away can be a, a really difficult thing for someone to do. It's to actually waste food, you know, so to speak, right. because of the way that we've we've grown up. So much of you know what you're talking about there is is just there's so much of that that goes on in in, in so many people's lives. I'm sure that there's people listening right now are like oh man i oh that's totally me yeah that's 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 exactly (laughs) me i've been through that same thing um and and it's because of that conditioning that that happens um in and around food yeah i've uh, but in in the process um of learning about intuitive eating um and and trying to practice it and learn and listen to my body um, by naturally listening to my body and taking some risks and, mm-hmm. and being, uh, uh, inquisitive about, I wonder how this would make me feel if I didn't eat all of this mm-hmm. and, and have comfort knowing it's there if you still need it, yep. you know, um, you know, but how would this, how would this feel if I didn't eat all of X or whatever, uh, where I would normally feel like, Oh, I have to, I have to finish this. There were times I would even go back and eat more of whatever we were eating at, at the house because I wanted to finish it off, you know, because I didn't want somebody else to, to finish it, to enjoy the Mm -hmm. last fruits of it, you know? Um, but now realizing it's there, if I still need it, I can eat this tomorrow. These leftovers from this restaurant, I I can eat this for lunch tomorrow. I get to enjoy it again instead of just enjoying it for that one time and feeling so miserable, uh, afterwards. But, Learning about not assigning value uh, to food. Um, there are still times that I push past that that little tickler that I've started to develop now. Like, am I am I getting full? Like, am I am I almost finished? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I I push past that. But now I show compassion to myself. Of you know what? I, I didn't need a snack a few hours ago, so I was a little I was a little hungry. I was kind of maybe in primal hunger a little bit. Mm-hmm. So and I've learned now when you're in primal hunger, there is no shut off valve because your body's trying to survive anything and everything all at once, just trying to survive. So I've learned a lot of things along the way that uh, have allowed me to show myself a lot more compassion. You know, mm-hmm. um, sometimes I do um, need to cope with, you know, some macaroni and cheese or whatever. But the yeah. difference is I don't eat an entire box anymore. You know, from the first bite, I've really tried to start thinking, how does this make me feel? Is this achieving what I want it to? You know, why do I like this? Why does, why do I enjoy this? You know, I try to have those conversations, mm-hmm. um, with myself. And actually, uh, a few weeks ago, I was trying to get the uh, last few days of, of, uh, vacation in. So I took like a week and a half off from work, which was really scary because I thought, what am I going to do? Well, okay. Well, I'm going to go hunting. Mm-hmm. And I'm and I'm still going to go to the gym and I'm going to do it. It was cold and wet and I just, I didn't go. And mm-hmm. so I didn't beat myself up for not going to the gym. So thought, man, I'm going to take some time off. Well, the longer I sat in isolation by myself, the more those habits started to creep in. Well, I'm going to door dash a, a bunch of food and mm-hmm. I'm just going to veg out and watch some movies today. And I did that for several days. And uh, in speaking with my dietitian, I thought, you know, I just didn't find so much fulfillment from that anymore. I still felt unfulfilled after having a week off, a week and a half off from work. She said, well, could it be that you don't need that anymore mm-hmm. for satisfaction or comfort? And it blew my mind. And yeah. I thought, well, that's why I didn't really enjoy my week and a half off from work is because I'm still leaning on these old crutches that I don't need anymore. So I know I've spoken a lot about that. So I tried to give you a, a, a an overview of past and, and present yeah. as far as relationship with food goes. Well, I think that uh, you know what you were talking about there it just really resonates with me and and with so many people. And that's that, that aspect of intuitive eating that we always emphasize, which is curiosity. Yeah. And 
that non-judgmental approach. You know, when you're approaching something that doesn't have moral value, you can take a neutral, non-judgmental approach to it because there is no right or wrong. Um, right. A cupcake is not good or bad. It's, you know, it, in some instances, a sugary, you know, quote, processed kind of food is actually going to serve your body better. I was just talking to somebody recently about this for per, um, performance nutrition yeah. And um, very high intensity exercise kinds of things and pointing out that sometimes these things that are deemed bad for you are actually better for you than a salad, a grilled chicken mm -hmm. salad would be because it's not going to sit well with you. It's not going to provide you with as much energy as quickly and as easily digested as this. And so right. um, all that curiosity stuff that you were talking about where you were um, speaking about, you know, how does this affect me? and and when I, how much of this now do I need to, to get the comfort? You know, when you do decide to eat for comfort reasons, that macaroni and cheese as your example, oh, right. how much of it do I need to feel comfort? And, and you have that freedom to stop knowing that tomorrow I can have that mac and cheese again, and I can have it the day after, and I can have it the day after if I want, right? because I've given myself that freedom to. And we find that when we eat in that way, we eat to a satisfaction we stop, we feel better in the moment, we feel better later because we haven't yeah. eaten beyond what our body really is desiring. And then emotionally, we feel good too because we we feel much more in control of of our eating habits and our behaviors. And so we don't we don't have that sort of chaotic loss of control feeling that right. that often comes in with it. And so yeah, I, th I think that's I, I think just the description that you gave there was just really really helpful to paint a, a great picture of how, of what it looks like to start at the beginning. Um, so anybody listening, you know, if you're at that beginning stage, mulling over whether you want to look into intuitive eating or maybe go, maybe go into it and, and start incorporating these principles. Uh, I love how you described it because it kind of you painted a picture of where you were and, and sort of how you've walked along that journey and what that's looked like. Um, as you progress through it, but you've also emphasized it's not a short, it's not an overnight thing. That's right. And, and, uh, I, I got into this, um, for the sole purpose of losing weight. I thought, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to lose weight. Um, I've lost some, but, um, not as much as I was hoping to. So I've had to make my peace with that. And, mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, I've, I've, now fully accepted this is going to be an ongoing process and it's not going to be one of those things that you do uh and lose a hundred pounds in six months you know right. i would much rather responsibly uh lose this weight by listening to my body and doing what my body needs uh mm -hmm. Along with that is, is physical movement. You know, mm -hmm. I don't excel at that, you know. Um, but I do know that whenever I do physical things for enjoyment, it feels good. I feel better. I sleep better. Mm -hmm. Like by honoring my body, by doing those things and, and, and eating those things and, and honoring my body with, with food that way. Um, I, f I feel better and that naturally, uh, is the way to go. And so as, as opposed to, uh, extreme restriction mm -hmm. or extreme physical exertion, um, is not the, not the way to go. Cause eventually you reach a breaking point and you think I can't do this anymore. You yeah. Know? Well, and you know, some people enjoy pushing themselves in that way physically and, and that's great. You know, if you right. like that kind of activity, if you like CrossFit and just, and then basically crawling back to your car afterward and you feel good <laughs> yeah. and that, you know, that makes you, brings you enjoyment, then, you know, more power to you. And, and, but, uh, I think a lot of people are in that mindset that if they don't do that, that they're not giving it their all, that they're, um, that it's a cop out, that they're not putting in the work and, you know, oh, all yeah. of these kinds of things that we kind of hear in the fitness world that, that says, you know, if you're not doing this, then you're not um, taking care of your body, you know, you're, you're, um, you've got to do these, for, you know, formal exercise program right. when, in, when in reality, just being more active and moving and, and, um, just taking care of your body in different ways is, is really going to give you so many benefits and really most of the main benefits when it comes to health. Right. Sometimes, uh, if you are hurt or sore, sometimes you 
it doesn't benefit you to get up at four o'clock in the morning to go beat yourself up at the gym. Yeah. Maybe you need to get some sleep. Mm -hmm. Maybe take a walk with your family after work. Yeah. You know, it, you don't have to do 57 burpees and, and the Murph every day to, to feel better. Those are great things. I've done a half Murph. Oh, cool. Okay. But <laughs> I, 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 you know, I got into CrossFit for a little while and got super, got super strong, mm -hmm. but I, I wasn't losing any weight because I was not honoring my body with food. So I was kind of, it was counterproductive mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and I got to where I was super sore and hurt. No, no pain, no gain. You know, if it hurts, it means it's working, you know, suck it up. It's only an arm, that yeah. kind of stuff, you know, <laughs> um, and the, people love that, yeah. you know, but for me, man, I was hurting and it would, when it came time to go back to the gym, I was like, oh man, I don't feel like going, I hurt too bad, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I, I did feel good about what I was doing after the workout was over. I would look back and think I did that. It took me twice as long as everybody else to do it, mm -hmm. but I completed it. Look at me go. And there was a sense of pride in that. Yeah. And, and so now I've kind of moved away from, like you said, the more, the real structured workout. I, uh, the times that I do go to the gym when I've selected that as my, my choice of movement, um, I really kind of walk in there with a blank slate. What do I want to do today? Mm-hmm. You know, do I want to just lift? Do I want to get on the bike? Do I want to get on the row machine? You know, do I just want to stretch, you know, yeah. and just kind of maybe do some yoga or something and just be at peace, you know? And so it, that that's really helped a lot, too, is knowing that I'm doing this exercise or, or this movement for myself to honor my body as opposed to attaining a time on a board or, you know, to be competitive with the other you know, competitors, mm -hmm. um, or, or to even please other people, you know, to see as a proof, like, see, I'm doing the work, I'm mm -hmm. doing the work, you know? Uh, and that, that dramatically changed my, my perspective too, as far as exercise goes that I'm, I'm, I'm going to do what makes me feel good and what I feel like I'm capable of doing. Some days I feel like pushing a little bit more by lifting mm -hmm. a little heavier, but I'm not trying to kill myself in the process. Yeah, I think that's such an important perspective to have when it comes to movement. I mean, that's why, interestingly enough, the the movement, uh, kind of reimagining, rethinking movement in, uh, over exercise and, and that kind of thing and, and kind of relabeling it is part of intuitive eating, even though it's not eating. But it's right. such an important part of of tying all those principles together It's in listening to your body. What's my body need today mentally and physically? Right. You know, you could be in a place mentally where you're you're not you probably shouldn't be trying to go for a max squat or a max deadlift because your head's just not in the right space. And, um, you know, I've, I had an interesting thing myself over the last this past year because I had um, for the first time I had a number of health uh, number of health issues come up. And um, one of those was I had to have shoulder surgery in March mm. and I had just started a few months prior doing ninja training, the, the oh, obstacle nice. course thing. And That's I cool. fell in love with it. Class one. I mean, like five minutes in, I was in love with it. And I was like, this is this is my thing. Um, but then I was having trouble with my shoulder. It was limiting me. So I had surgery in March. And what. What I kind of learned through that whole process, and then I had colon polyps removed in oh, April. Goodness. I had prostate surgery in September. <laughs> had, oh wow! Got diagnosed with sleep apnea in. Hey. And now I'm on a CPAP. And welcome and to I'm, the club. Yeah, and I'm. If you're watching the video, I'm. <laughs> I'm not a big guy, but you know that's not. It's not just the yeah. thing that bigger people experience. You know, a lot of times there's a stigma around that, and it's like I just. It's just the way my throat and my genetics are. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, for this this year, it's been this uh, just all of these things. Oh, and I found out my cholesterol is off too. So, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm taking cholesterol meds. Yeah. Um, but all of this stuff over this year has been really interesting. Um, because going back to the physical activity thing, what what I learned through that was that because I had shifted my mentality, because I used to be in the very structured. Six days a week, I followed my program, didn't matter how I felt. Um, but having shifted that thinking, I was able to go from doing this physical activity that I really loved to doing physical therapy with bands and towel rolls and and the little plastic coated one and a half pound weights. And, you know, I, until September, I wasn't even able, allowed to do a push up. 
Oh, wow. So for that whole time, because they had to do quite a bit of repair. So, um, but because of the way that I had shifted my thinking, I just looked at it as a different kind of challenge, a different sort of way of approaching physical activity. And I didn't have to go big. I had to really listen to my body. And, and I felt proud of myself for the mobility increases that I was making and that I was staying consistent with that. And that I wasn't hurting my, my surgery and that it was actually healing and progressing well. And that mentality is not typical in, in fitness, but yet it, it's something that I think my my view and my mindset shift um, moving into intuitive eating over the last few years, I think that mindset shift has trickled over into other areas like that so that I, I'm better able to not only take care of myself, but also enjoy things that might have been more of a frustration, like a depression, mm-hmm. like, oh, I can't do this. What am I going to do? I might as well not do anything. It's like, no, I can... I can do all kinds of things that are good for my body. And I did. And as a result, yeah. now I'm feeling better than ever. And um back doing Ninja last started last week. And awesome. So, yeah. So. Yeah. So it's really, really interesting. So how would you describe your kind of your body image and maybe your relationship with your body kind of in the past and then sort of now yeah. i mean i don't think anybody has perfect body image but and if they no. do they're probably <laughs> maybe a narcissist i don't know you know yeah. uh if you don't yeah i think all of us struggle to some degree with how we view our body in different at least in different contexts and circumstances but maybe you could talk a bit a little bit about that yeah so um i mentioned earlier um when i was younger uh i did a lot of things to try to stave off uh being bigger but at the same time, I was proud of being a larger guy, you know, um, but uh, the the heavier I got, you know, of course, it comes with like, oh, my gosh, I've got to buy this size pants now or these size, you know, uh, shirts, um, you know, so that was that was tough. Um, like I said, especially whenever people start making comments about your body, especially people uh, that you know, and you're comfortable with, um, when they start saying things like, you know, man, you need to push back from the table a little bit more, huh? You know, or, Oh man, you've really let yourself go. And meanwhile, you're just like, yeah, I guess I have, you know, and then you start thinking about all the food that you ate and how Mm -hmm. sad you were in which that makes you sad. And it it, it kicks off that cycle. Right over and over and think it, it really limits or, or declines your, your self image, your self worth. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even, uh, at church, um, precious old ladies come and pat you on the belly and say, sweetheart, you need to lose weight. You know, I'm worried about your health. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in the South, uh, um, we're raised to have manners. And so in that moment, you just say, yes, ma'am, I mm-hmm. understand, you know, meanwhile at their house for lunch, they're making, you know, chicken fried steak and mashed potatoes and gravy and corn and all this really great stuff. But then you're also supposed to be thin, you know, yeah. I, um, you know, and, and, um, I haven't really experienced it with, with family per se, but, um, you know, when you go back for a high school reunion, you know, where everyone has put on weight, Mm -hmm. some more than others, but for whatever reason, since I'm larger than everyone, I'm, I'm the target, you know, man, you've really put on a lot of weight, man. What happened to you? You know, you played sports in high school and all, you know, what happened? What you know? uh, And you think, man, if you only knew what I've been struggling with and dealing with and how I've been coping with that. And so you really start to lose, um, your self-worth, um, Mm -hmm. Uh, how you see yourself um, as unworthy uh, to be loved um, as unworthy uh, for acceptance. Mm -hmm. um, And that lends itself to more isolation. You don't want pictures taken of you. Uh, You don't want to be involved in your class reunion because man, everybody's going to say something about my size. So I'm just not going to go, which by the way, I just, went to our 20th reunion this past October and no one said anything about my weight, yeah. but that entire time I thought, man, everybody's going to say something because in the past they have, you know? Yeah. Well, and that self talk um, that we do often, we, yeah. we talk ourselves into thinking and in, into believing what we are thinking others are thinking of us. But of course it doesn't help the fact that a lot, I mean, a lot of people do think that those things, unfortunately, the, the, the weight stigma and, 
and that kind of thing around body size is just it's prevalent right. everywhere and it's, yeah so you know in um you don't fit well into chairs and seats. So you stand the entire time and mm -hmm. then you're, then you start hurting because you've been standing for four hours, you know, and, mm -hmm. and then you start thinking, well, I wouldn't deal with this if I wasn't so big, you know, uh, uh, flying, you know, having yeah. the, uh, em embarrassment or so of asking for a seatbelt extender you know, and trying to be really quiet about it. And the stewardess or, or steward comes by and there's like, a, here's your seatbelt extender, you know, in front of everyone. And, right. And you think, gosh, I wouldn't have to deal with this if I wasn't so large. And then you do like I did this past summer. I drove from Louisiana to Utah because I didn't want to fly. And it's expensive also to fly a family <laughs> of five, by the way. Right. But, um, you start limiting uh, the things that you want to do because of your size, uh, experiencing the majesty and beauty of Utah of God's creation in Utah was incredible. Looking at different hikes to go on and Zion and stuff. I think, well, I don't know. I'll, I don't think I can do that. I can't, I physically can't do that. So I started limiting myself and, mm -hmm. and on our way back, I started thinking like, you know what? We went on some hikes and I feel good about it. I probably couldn't physically do a few of those things, but I made peace with the fact that I did do hikes. Mm -hmm. I did get to enjoy all that. And, and I focused on that instead of all the things that I couldn't do. Um, even in the, and kind of shift gears a little bit, uh, even in my marriage, um, for the longest time, uh, I felt like, um, how could my wife love somebody so disgusting mm -hmm. as me? Um, so that a lot of, a lot of negativity, uh, goes on when you look at how, um, your body fits into different things. Like I said, I, I for the longest time, I felt so, um, unworthy of love. I've felt unworthy of God's love and his mm -hmm. forgiveness and grace in my life. Um, because I damaged, um, the body that he gave me, he created me mm -hmm. in his image on the sixth day. When he created man, he said everything else was good. But whenever he created man, he said it was very good. Mm -hmm. in, a, in, in a larger body, you don't feel very good. Um, you know, and, and when you're shopping for clothes, there's not a big and tall store anywhere around me now. So mm -hmm. I have to do online shopping. And so the larger you get, the, the lesser the amount of clothes options you have. And that's demoralizing, yeah. you know? So there's a lot that goes on, um, with self image, uh, and, and, and how you view your body. I'm still obviously <laughs> getting emotional to talking about this because it's hard. It's, it's really tough, um, to do those things, um, to, to move past that. It's kind of where I'm, I'm just being real and honest. Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, is trying to figure out how to be okay with where I'm at right now. Yeah. Um, and that's something that, that I think gets so overlooked um, with, with people who have not experienced that. And I've personally not experienced it myself, but I kind of mentioned earlier when we were talking off air about my late wife and, and that she was very large. And um, so I was able to see some of it firsthand, some of those things that you talked about there about, you know, we'd go see a movie and it was, you know, she was for lack of, I mean, it, it, this is kind of just a, a way of describing it, but she was stuffing herself into the, you know, into the seat and it yeah. looked very uncomfortable. And, and in the car, you know, the steering wheel was up against her stomach and, and it yeah. was all the way back and, and those kinds of things. And it's, so it's, you know, you're not only dealing with, um, what society thinks of you and you're, you're not only dealing with, the limitations of uh, of the physical world that we are in and and what you're limited in what you can do and how you can participate um which that would be a whole other conversation about making things more accessible but then you yeah. have the you, you have that that you know what you are maybe f what you feel like you aren't able to do just because of of your size but i love what you talked about there how you've been really shifting to thinking about hey what yeah. can i do and shifting away from instead of, okay, I can't do that hike. Well, you know, I mean, even 
Uh, I have to remind myself of that myself, too. I, you know, I can't do that one thing. Now, mine may not be because of the size of my body, but because of some other reason, I think. Right. Um, but I but I think that's a really good mindset shift that to really focus on, hey, what can I do? What can what can I do that that serves me well, that brings me enjoyment and um, and focus on those things rather than what we can't do. And and also something that I've. I mean, this is really fresh on my mind. Uh, as you were talking, I thought, um, I may not be able to do that right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but as I continue, uh, in this process and, and, uh, get into better shape, not, not for worldly standards or for acceptance, yeah. but through self care, um, because I want to be able to move. I want to be able to function. I want to mm -hmm. be, I, I want to be more adventurous you know, um, and go on better hikes or, or go do, uh, anything and not be limited, uh, by my size. But, um, so I've also tried to tell myself, you know, I'm, I may not be able to do that right now, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not cut it off. Just like, I can't do that. Yeah. You know, but try to look at it. Okay. Well, I may not be able to do that right now where I'm at, but, but I, I will be able to. Yeah. I like that. And, um, yeah, you know, the, the the cool thing too is when you start to think of it from that perspective, it it allows you to think more about well, what are some things that I could do, um, right, to get closer to being able to do that. And we and often people find out well, you know, I thought I needed to lose weight, but in reality, I just I, that would help. But but at the same time, I if I increase my cardiovascular fitness, right. okay, so maybe I'm going to do some things that maybe aren't the most fun. Like I, I don't like cardio, but I do it because it helps me with my ninja stuff more. Right. I do balance work for the ninja stuff. It's not as fun as swinging from your arms and doing that stuff, but I do <laughs> yeah. it because I, I know that it's part of the, the whole experience. And if I want to enjoy everything more then I'm right. going to need to do some things that eh, it's not, not the most fun, uh, kind of like, I mean, think about work, you know, maybe your job's okay, but it's not thrilling and you do it, but it's, it provides the money so you can enjoy life right. and, 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 uh, that kind of thing. And so do you ever, do you ever get the temptation to go back to dieting? Um, when you're, especially if you have a goal where you say, oh, I can't do that. Or, oh, this was really uncomfortable. Do you ever have that, that pull to return oh. back to dieting? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, I'm not going to sit here and lie to everybody in front of, in front yeah. of their face here. Uh, you know, yeah, there are times you think, man, this would be a lot easier if I were thinner, mm -hmm. you know, or I, I'd be able to do this. I keep going back to hike because that's what we did this last summer. But, you know, I'd be able to do it, work in the yard better mm -hmm. if I were thinner, uh, you know. Uh, and so you start kind of bargaining with yourself like, well, maybe – you know, I won't eat as much as this and the, but you have to stop yourself because I have learned for me, whenever I come from a place of restriction, that's very scary. It stresses me out now to think about restricting mm -hmm. because I know that the result will be, uh, binging and overeating, which is counterintuitive to what I'm trying to accomplish here. Yeah. So is that, is that kind of how you deal with those times as you, is that conscious reminding yourself of kind of where you, where you came where you've come from and, and where you are now. Um, or, yeah. Or so like, like um, I, I mentioned working in the yard, uh, you know, um, every guy or, or girl, I guess, you know, um, takes pride in their yard. Most people do. Um, uh, and there are times that I put off doing certain tasks. Cause I think, man, this is going to be super hard for me to do. And I'm going to get worn out doing this. Um, so some of the things I try to do from time to time is I have to remind myself it kind of just like I talked about with the restaurant and having the, the, the leftovers later for lunch. Well, how about I, I just do a little bit today? Mm -hmm. I don't have to do it all today. Yeah. You know, um, I can do this tomorrow. I can, I can do it next weekend. You know, I, you know, not, not in a, a procrastination sense, but, you know, but making peace with the fact that you don't, I don't have to get it all done today. Yeah. You know, I kind of break it down into smaller chunks to where it is achievable. And the more that you practice that and the more that you're active, you could probably prolong your next 
yard session. And, and before you know it, you're probably out there for the amount of time that you wanted to do last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's something that I've tried to implement. I don't knock it out of the park all the time. I still yeah. deal with putting it off because I think, man, this gosh, I've really kind of let that flower bed go. Um, but maybe I just do a section at a time, kind of break it down into different, uh, into different segments to where it is attainable to mm-hmm. where I have that satisfaction of, of a job complete. And I accomplished this task instead of focusing on all the rest of the things that I, that I need to do. Yeah. Well, has, has kind of working on those principles of intuitive eating helped with that, that difference in mindset shift. Cause I find that a, a, a lot of times when, when working with clients is that, you know, they start off working on their relationship with food and it just trickles over into so many other areas of their life. Yeah. I, and, and really what it is, is, um, the self-compassion, uh, yeah component and making peace with it's okay to, to not do that. It's a, you're going to be fine, you know, and, and kind of, um, I just keep coming back to the phrase of making peace with, um, it's okay not to complete this task right now. You don't have to do the full thing. You could do that tomorrow. You can finish this mm-hmm. task tomorrow. Um, I, I think that's the biggest component uh, for me is the self-compassion because man, I would beat myself up and people say, oh, well, I'm my own worst critic. It is so true uh, yeah. with me because I even shame myself for, for not completing this or not being able to do it. And then you start thinking, well, gosh, I could have done it if I were thinner, I could have mm-hmm. done, you know, and then you start it, all the self hate and stuff and the self, uh, the body image hate comes in. And, and then next thing I know, I'm just in a funk. And yeah. then I uh, kind of start leaning towards that, that coping mechanism of food. And, but I have to, I have to snap myself back out of it and say, Hey, that didn't work. Like this didn't, this didn't work. Um, mm-hmm. you know, so, but the self-compassion part really that I've learned through intuitive eating has bled over, um, to a lot of different, uh, aspects of my life. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, I think that's really important that I, I love that, the, that emphasis there on the, on the self-compassion, because it's really easy to, to get in that mindset of, you know, thinking if we're not doing this or that, that we're, we're not giving it our all when in reality, it just may, it, it may not need to be done at that time. It may be that we need rest at times mentally or physically and, right. and and honoring that um those signals that our body gives us at times that says hey you need to take you need to rest here or you need to take uh take it easy here or put this off and, and to be okay with that that can be a really difficult thing for people especially a lot of people who have a kind of a perfectionist mindset and and right. often dieting um further encourages that it it further encourages that perfectionist um mentality and everything. Yeah. I, um, one of the things that I had to learn is to be okay with saying no, uh, oh, to yeah. things, uh, I fully believe, uh, in being a servant, uh, not only in the church, but in, mm-hmm. in my community, uh, I was serving on several boards in town at one point in time. And I realized, man, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, just, uh, wearing myself out saying yes to everything, all the different little committees within these boards have these, you know, events coming up. And I would say, yes, yes, yes. And, um, I was wearing myself out and I got to a place where I just, I through the help of my counselor, Andy, that he's like, Hey, this is what's good. You're too busy. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Oh no, but I, but I need to serve. I've got to do this. I need to, it's, this is a noble calling in my life. The Lord wants yeah. me to serve. It wants me to, man, I'm wearing myself out. And so I'm stressed out. And so I would eat and isolate. And all the while, while I'm trying to tell myself that I'm doing good, it was not paying dividends, yeah. you know, in my personal life, in my private life. And, and, uh, I, I mentioned on the other podcast this uh, past year, I was awarded the incredibly prestigious honor of being man of the year for my wow. town for those, uh, service, uh, oriented, um, uh, groups that I was, I was in and serving at the church and stuff. And, and I, f- I didn't feel worthy because I felt like I wasn't doing enough or I felt like I hadn't done enough. Mm-hmm. And so when I got that, that prestigious honor, um, I felt so guilty because I had entered that season of saying no. 
yeah. uh, because I, or I'm sorry, I can't. And so I'm here, I am getting this wonderful honor for community service and I'm in the midst of, I'm sorry, I can't. And so that brought on a lot of guilt. Like I, I don't deserve this, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so uh, somebody really kind of put my mind at ease and they said, yeah, but you're receiving this honor for all the times that you did say yes and all the things that you did. And it's okay. Like you don't have to keep this up, you know? And, and so that really helped me make peace with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm still kind of taking a step back, not serving on as many. And uh, uh, I still do a lot of, you know, community involvement things and volunteer for different things, but not as heavily as I used to. And so that's, that's something that I learned along the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, again, with self-compassion of like, Hey, it's okay to say no. It's okay to not, do everything. Yeah. I mean, that's really a, that's an important act of self care. I think, um, yeah. I, I, I definitely find myself doing that same kind of thing too. You know, there's been times where I was doing so many different things that I was sleeping four hours a night and, um, mm. you know, and that kind of a thing thinking, Oh, I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to serve in this capacity. And, and in reality, I was doing, I was not doing a great job at everything because I was, I was so yeah. stretched so thin and, um, and it's, it, yeah, it's just those, those simple acts of self care. And that's one of the things that, that I think intuitive eating really helps us to do is to really start to look for those, those ways that we can care for ourselves in ways that don't involve dieting, restricting and yeah. changing our body size. So, you know, you posted this um, meme, um, on Facebook oh, yeah. the other day. And, um, and maybe this will be a good way we could wrap up the last few minutes of our, our conversation here. But, um, it said when weight isn't the goal, what does taking care of your body actually look like? And I thought that was a great question, a great kind of open ended question. And I think that might be a good way to maybe, maybe you can, we, we've talked a lot about so many different really important things here today. And I think this might be a good way to wrap it all up with some actual like practical things that may be examples of what you've done. Um, right. Maybe what, what uh, maybe other people who you've <laughs> been around have done where you're like, that's a really great idea. Um, that kind of thing, so, you know, taking care of your body when, when weight is of no consequence. Right. So <clears throat> uh, as a believer in Christ, uh, uh, dealt with issues of, you know, I could serve God better if I were, if I had a thinner body, mm-hmm. you know, it'd be uh, a spiritual act of worship. If I exercised more, if I treated my body like a temple, if I did all these things that uh, were unattainable and dealing with um, all of the shame and the guilt and the body image hate and all of that. Um, there were a lot of times that I would uh, cry out to God, take this from me. Like, I don't, I don't want to be like this anymore. Mm -hmm. And, um, the entire time I've now learned that he just wanted me to just lay it down, uh, to give it to him, uh, to fully let go of all of those things that I was holding on to all the shame and the guilt, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, the Bible says that his mercies are new every day. You know, I wrote down some notes, um, in Lamentations, it says the loving kindness of the Lord never ceases for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And I knew those things, Mm -hmm. but in a practical sense, uh, in the Christian perspective, I finally laid it all down. I can serve God better right now. Just as I am. That's an old mm-hmm. church hymn that people yeah, know. I just as I am. One. Yeah. You know, and all the times in, in trying to reaching uh, unbelievers, we always tell them, come just as you are. You know, just lay it all, give it all. But I, I wasn't doing that. Mm-hmm. Even as a practicing Christian, I was not laying it all down mm-hmm. at the feet, you know. So one of the things that I started doing is I was more intensive in my Bible study. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. So I finally started seeking God first mm-hmm. by getting in the word daily, by studying it. I found that through doing that, I felt I had more of a hunger for the word than I had never had before. 
And I, I also wrote this down. This is kind of uh, the Bible verse for intuitive eating. I don't know if anybody's claimed this or not, but <laughs> you know, Romans 12, two says, do not conform to the world mm-hmm. the diet culture, Yeah, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may approve what the will of God is, that which is good and pleasing and perfect. God has given us all things to enjoy, mm-hmm. you know, and, and and we need to to hold on to that by not by by not limiting those things. He's given us all things to enjoy. So, you know, I, I, I have started to cling to that that I'm created in God's image. I'm an image image bearer of Christ. He created me this way. Mm-hmm. I believe that He wanted me to. Uh, he could have easily easily taken those things away for me, he's all powerful. And I know that he can make me skinny tomorrow. Yeah. But you know, if he did that, I would take credit for that. Mm -hmm. I would say, man, look at me go, man, I worked this. I beat this into submission. Look at me. Yeah. But I'm not pointing people to Jesus. If, if that happened. So he's brought me through this journey so that I could share this journey that it's, it's not, it's not through my power. It's not, I've, this is what has happened whenever, whenever I've been through my own power and my own will. This mm-hmm. is what I've done through my own my own effort, but through God and, and seeking his kingdom first so that I may find what the will of God is in my life. And all of these things have started falling into place when I focus my attention on Christ. And, and I've shared with you that um, recently at, I've had a calling to enter into the counseling ministry. Yeah. Jeff, I, I, wouldn't, great. I wouldn't have been able to be obedient and willing and humble in a, enough place to accept that calling. If I had not been through all these trials and tribulations where I kind of realized that my focus is not on me, mm-hmm. but it's on him. And he says, you know what? I'm going to take all of your imperfections and I'm going to use them for my glory to point people to Jesus ultimately so that he can receive the glory and others can experience the freedom that I have. I'm still a big guy. Yeah. That that's something I've also dealt with. It's like, man, how in the world can I help people counsel people, whether it be through intuitive eating or just counseling in general, when I'm like this way and God tell me, don't worry about that. Yeah. Just let me, let me, let me do with you what I want, what I want you to do. And so if I had not experienced all of these things and by staying in the world, uh, staying in the word every day by the transforming of my mind and clinging to his mercies being new every single day, that now I realize what my purpose is. And I had not, if I had not endured those things, I wouldn't realize that now. And now I have the opportunity to pass that on to, and to bless others and to encourage others the way that he would have me do. Yeah. You know, I preached it, a little bit. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't, hey, I didn't that's intend fine. to. <laughs> um, you know, it reminds me of a song. I don't know if you're familiar with Michael Card. Um, he's a Christian musician and he, he, his, his lyrics are much deeper. they they remind me of like songs and that kind of a thing. Yeah. But he's got a song called uh, joy in the journey. Mm. And it's, and I've always liked that, that phrase. I've sort of borrowed it in a lot of context that, that there's a, joy in in the journey and and it seems like that's a lot of what what you're you're expressing now is that yeah. this journey has through that process even though it's been difficult and challenging and and heartbreaks and and you know down times and stuff yeah um it's that journey that's brought you to where you are today and given you the ability to do what you're doing now which is to help other people by sharing your story and relating to them and yeah. And once you get into your in, into the counseling ministry, actually counseling other people and helping them to work through things that that you yourself have have experienced and been through, and I think that that'll be a a really powerful a, a powerful way to serve people with both the counseling um, you know, at that deeper level, but then also right. with the intuitive eating counseling potentially. If if you decide that that's something you want to incorporate in your in your work with people too, because I think that'll yeah. be something that we need more guys doing this kind of, of stuff. Um, there's plenty yeah. of guys out there telling people to go big or go home and giving them diet plans and, you know, flexing their abs. And we need more, yeah. more men saying, Hey, you know what? It's okay to, 
to take a compassionate kind approach to re- healing your relationship with food just because right. you're a guy doesn't mean that you don't have um issues with your you know emotional issues that could be dealt with and could be in, um handled in a way that could give you a more joyful life right. and joyful experience and an enjoyment of food regardless of whether your body changes um in the way that you might like or not because so many people yeah. are hung up on the idea that um, once I, once I get to this goal, then oh, I'll be able to yeah. do all these things. Then I'll be able to enjoy things. Then I'll be able to travel instead right. kind of this approach where, Hey, what can I do now? And like you, you pointed out, you went to Utah and you couldn't do every hike, but you know what? If I went to Utah, I couldn't do every hike. Um, yeah. and I used to be a rock climber. Um, yeah. I mean, I can, I was a competitive rock climber and I, there's wow. things I couldn't do. Um, but likewise, you know, um, you found other things that you could and you did get yeah. to experience a lot of that. And I think that's a really important thing for for people to understand is that just because you can't do one thing. And it's easy for me to say because I am in a smaller right. body. So I do acknowledge that. But at the same time, you know, if you can't do this, what can you do? And focusing on that can be so helpful in improving your body image, which can then also trickle into your relationship with food and on right. all of those kinds of things. And I, you know, in, as a guy, you're taught that you need to physically overwhelm your opponent, whether in any sort of sport or whatever, you should be able to physically overwhelm whatever it is you're uh, dealing with, you know, to be a conqueror, to be a mm-hmm. fighter, to, um, to be the alpha dog, you know, yeah. um, and one of the things that I've learned in my process and, and kind of humbling myself, like I said, getting in the word and, and dealing with that, that shame of, of me not being able to physically overcome whatever it is, you know, I turn, you know, to the, uh, in Matthew where Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, man, that was me. And I will give you rest. Mm-hmm. Let me take the yoke off of you. And learn of me from gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. My oak, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. That was really heavy, trying to diet and trying to deal with all the body issues yeah. and all of that. And like I said in a uh, session a few weeks ago, I'd learned that I really need to just let it go mm-hmm. and and to seek help for that. And that's not something that we're taught to do as, as men, but man, how liberating would that be? If you, if you, as a man, as a leader of your family and your church, step up and say, Hey, this is the way you don't have, you don't have to do all of this, you know, cause there's a lot of people that are on these exercise plans and diet plans that are miserable, Yeah, but they don't know any other way. They don't mm-hmm. know anything else, anything else better to do that. There is another option, you know, that, that is gentler, like, yeah. like intuitive eating, you know? Um, but ultimately for me as a Christian, I had to enter that place where I had to lay those at the foot of the cross, you know, cause you know, like I said, his mercies are new every day and he's going to take care of me. He's going to supply all my needs, you know? And, um, so as a guy, like you said, you know, that was, that was even tough for me to, to let go of is mm-hmm. to know that it's not through my power that I am going to have to rely on the Lord for this. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's fantastic. That's such good, such good advice. I think that that's, that that, um, is really, it's just a very powerful way to wrap up today. I think, um, mm. that's incredible advice. And, and I think that a lot of people are going to resonate. I have to say, you're the first person who got me teary eyed on the uh, on the podcast. And so oh, I actually appreciate that <laughs> very much because I like you, wow. I'm a very emotional person. Um, you know, I cry at at um, Homeward Bound every time at the end. <laughs> you know, a movie, you know, that end scene there. Yeah. Oh, You're my a gosh. monster I'm, if you don't. I'm starting to tear up even just mentioning <laughs> the movie. I can't. Yeah. Um, Oh. I, I've I remember crying at a Phineas and Ferb episode. Oh, were there triangle heads? <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember what it was, but it was <laughs> somewhat. It was shortly after my wife died, and yeah, and I was like, something just like got me, and I was like, my kids are like, you're crying at Phineas and Ferb. I'm like, yeah, it's touching me. <laughs> you know, so yeah, so they give me a hard time, but uh, anyway, yeah, so. Long story short, I appreciate uh, that. That uh, I really appreciate your openness, and, yeah. and I think that that's really going to connect with people. And I think that's going to really make you a great counselor 
um, mm. as you move See, into now, that. Because- now you're, you're going to make me cry. Because <laughs> Because I, I do feel like, you know, what can I, like you said, I, once I get to this place, then I'll be able to serve people better. But, um, mm-hmm. uh, and, and dealing with, I don't know all the answers. I'm, I'm in the process of doing my certification stuff right mm-hmm. now. Um, so I, I appreciate that encouragement. Yeah. Um, and that further affirms, uh, God's calling on my life. So thank you for that. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, um, I know I didn't really ask you this before, but is there any way, are you active on social media where people can follow you or are you more just kind of a, a guy posting cat memes and, and, uh, yeah. inspirational quotes here and there? Um, it, it, do you want anyone to contact you? Yeah. You know, I'd be happy to, I don't have all the answers. I'm not a, an established dude. Like I'm just a normal yeah guy on the Facebooks. Uh, yeah. I'm not even on Instagram. <laughs> I'm not yeah. even on Twitter. I, you know, I'm just, I'm on Facebook and, uh, you are more than welcome, uh, to reach out to me at any time, uh, for anything. I don't have all the answers. I'm not yeah. a, a celebrity of it. I don't, I don't know. Like, yeah. but if you want to have at it, that's, that's yeah. fine. Well, I'll tell you what, if, uh, if anybody's um, listening and would like to, to contact uh, Jake for, for whatever reason, just send me an email and then I'll reach out to him and, and uh, we'll figure out how to get you in contact together if it seems yeah. like a, an appropriate thing. So um, again, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on here and share your wisdom and insight and heart with our listeners. And so thank you again. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. And, and, uh, and I, I hope I did well by, awesome. by going first. I don't, I don't mind leading the charge yeah. uh, on anything. I'm uh, just trying to walk in freedom and, uh, and, and not living a life of fear. Yeah. And so thank you for allowing me the opportunity to do this. I appreciate all of your work and uh, that you're doing with uh, men's intuition It's such a practical, um, a podcast that I, that has blessed me greatly. So thank you for Great. letting me be a part of this. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And that means a lot. So thanks again, everyone for listening and look forward to bringing you uh, more exciting episodes in the future. 